This video is kindly brought to you by Skillshare. And welcome to Dr. Mix! Today I want to speak about harmony. It's possibly the thing that I've been the most fixated with for the longest time in my life. It's so beautiful and with today's uh, episode I hope to tickle your fantasy to go and explore it. Before I go any further, I would kindly ask you to please subscribe to this channel. It allows me to do more better videos and your support really means a lot to me. So it'd be great if you could hit that subscribe button. Yes. And hit the bell. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Look, harmony is beautiful. I'm going to start with uh, a few basic concepts. So this is the piano. It's a beautiful instrument. This particular sound is from the Yamaha Modi X. And I'm gonna start with the first things that I learned about harmony. So when I was a little kid, I would hear songs on the radio, on the television. I would record with a cassette tape from the television and then I would play it back and try to figure out the melody. Maybe at the time it was like the Italian news. Right? And, and you know what, I'm gonna take this very example because you will notice how there is a certain tension in this passage that I've just played. Can you feel the tension? Where do we want to go from here? So one of the most important concepts in harmony is to create tension and release. This is pretty much the game. Let me show you what happens there. So if we are in the key of C major, which pretty much everyone would know, right? It's all white keys, all right? You can create chords that follow this scale. So the first degree, if you play every other note, you're gonna have a C major. And if you keep going, you get D minor, then you got E minor, then you get F major, and then you get G major. I'm gonna stop there for a second. What happens with G major is that if you add even one more note, now you have this chord, which is the fifth degree of C. And this feels like it wants to land to C. Because this chord, which is called a dominant chord, wants to go home. This is it. I can play with this. Can you feel that tension? Right? This, this kind of tension and release is kind of central in the understanding of harmony. So I'm gonna give you two clues for that. So when you're talking about a major scale, you're talking about this seven notes, but there are not only seven notes, there are 12 notes. Let me count them for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. This doesn't count because it would be the same note at the higher octave. So all the white keys identify a major scale, which is this. And it feels major. You can have a completely different taste if you, just still using these seven notes, you start from, say, A. So now you have a minor feel. Here you got a major feel, and here you got a minor feel. I'm sure you can hear the difference, right? One, it's sort of, uh, I mean, traditionally they say it's happy, and this is sad, which I don't necessarily agree. You can do very funny music with minor. This doesn't feel sad, does it? So it's not strictly true that major chords feel happy and minor chords 
feel sad. The important thing that you should consider is that out of those 12 notes, you're gonna have a certain number of steps. You're gonna have a certain code, and this is the code. You're gonna have one tone separation between first and second, one tone separation between second and third, half a tone separation between third and fourth. Then you get one more tone here, one more tone here, one more tone here, and a semitone here again. So when you have a semitone between the third and the fourth degree of the scale, and the seventh and the eighth degree of the scale, you have a major scale. If you want to go to the relative minor of this, you go to A, and then you have one tone. Now the semitone comes between the second and the third degree, and then you've got fourth, fifth, and then you go between the fifth and the sixth degree A semitone, and then it's one tone and one tone. So the major scale has a semitone between the third and the fourth, and between the seventh and the eighth degree of the scale. Minor has a semitone between the second and third, and fifth and sixth. Kind of why I like harmony is because it's often the way you look at it. I mean, you're still talking about just white keys, right? But all of a sudden, by selecting some of them, I could create tension and resolution. Or I could take a minor approach to it and give you a different feel. So we're not really changing anything, we're just playing white keys, but it's like the same thing and you can look at it from two different points of view. It's major if you start from C, it's minor if you start from A. Of course it gets a lot deeper than that because then every note has a relationship with every other note depending on what you're playing and in what context you're playing. Have I tickled your fantasy quite yet? No? All right, let me tell you a few more things. So this concept of minor and major and where the semitones are applies to any key. So if I am doing this in uh, Say, I want to go to G major. Now, G major, we're going to go... All right? In G major, we have one tone, one tone. Now we're at the third, so third and fourth. There you go. We have our semitone there. Tone, tone. Now we have to go to a tone again. So automatically, we will have to go to this black key, which is F sharp. And then we're going to have that famous semitone because that's the semitone between 7th and 8th degree. And we are back to G. So although you are starting the same reasoning on a different note, the concept does not change. Of course it takes practice if you want to, you know, play major scale in C, or in G, or in D, or in A. So that's just practice. I mean, the same concept, if you apply it to a guitar, it's a lot easier because guitar is like chromatic. It doesn't have white and black keys. All you need to do is move across the fretboard. And so the, uh, the concept applies the same way. I think it's just a matter of being curious about it and, uh, you know, dedicate a little bit of time to find out about it. Also, great learning tools can be very helpful. Speaking of which, Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come to learn and empower their creative minds with thousands of inspiring classes on topics such as illustration, graphic design, video, and music. Skillshare is a great place to explore your creativity. I recently checked out Music Theory Comprehensive Part 1, How to Read Music by Jason Allen. It's really well made with clear explanations and very helpful graphic work. But also, all Skillshare classes are really well made and curated specifically for learning. Like for example, there are no ads, which is very cool. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. I really invite you to check out Skillshare. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to check the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so that you can start exploring your creativity today. So now let me show you a further step in harmony. Now, if this creates tension, this is called G dominant. And as we said, it dominates the home chord of C but you can do a lot more than just create tension and resolution. 
tension and resolution. You can create set up tension and resolution. Set up tension resolution. So what I'm doing here is using the 251 progression. This is a bit of the building block of much of the harmony that you could listen to today. Classical music relies a lot on it. Jazz music relies a lot on it. Pop music relies almost entirely on it. It's a pretty simple concept if you really look at it. 2-5-1 means building a chord on the second degree, then on the fifth degree, and then on the first degree of the scale. You have D minor, it could be D minor 7, yeah, and then you have G dominant, 7, and then you have C major, all right? So with this little nugget, I can pretty much establish any key. Check out. If I want to establish the key of C, I would go... But if I then want to establish the key of E flat major, which sounds complicated if you don't know about harmony, but this is how it sounds. It didn't change. Nothing changed of what I did. I just did it on a different key. So if I do it in rapid succession, I'm gonna give you the sensation of having changed key. So I go. Let's do it one more time. Maybe we do 2 5 1 of F. And then I could do 2 5 1 of uh, A flat. And now I want to go back to C and I go 2 5 1. You see? We haven't changed where the semitones are. We're still talking about having it between 3rd and 4th and 7th and 8th. It just changes where we started this from. In a way, harmony, it's complicated. And in a way, it isn't. Because if you're talking about this kind of diatonic, simple, harmonic language, then all you need to do is count the notes. But otherwise, it's always the same thing. It's like harmony. You look at it from one side, and it's like that. But you look at it from the other side, and it's the same thing, but different, but not. Isn't that amazing? Am I the only one here who finds it extremely interesting? Of course not. Harmony is really good. Well, listen, there is so much more to discover about it. And I think that today we've covered a lot of ground. I'm going to give you, you know, in the future more ideas that you can explore. You know, this is simple. You can explore it by yourself. I'm going to try and, uh, you know, make you more curious about harmony and about learning your craft because it's fun and it pays off in the long run. Saying two, five, one, one. Thank you for watching. I love you a lot. Take care of yourselves.